நண்பர்களே வணக்கம் மன்னிக்கிறோம் நான் ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேச போகிறேன் அண்டர் தி மோடி கவர்மெண்ட் ஃபார் த பாஸ்ட் எயிட் இயர்ஸ் த கண்ட்ரி ஹேஸ் விட்னஸ்ட் த மோஸ்ட் டயபாலிக்கல் அட்டாக் ஆன் டெமோக்ரஸி செக்குலரிசம் அண்ட் த மூவ்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி ஆர்எஸ்எஸ் பிஜேபி டு அஷர் அண்ட் அத்தாரிட்டேரியன் Hindu Rashtra. So the CPIM along with the left and democratic forces in the country are resisting and fighting against these economic policies of the Modi government which are primarily to benefit the corporates and big business of our country and the planned effort to subvert the democratic secular Republican constitution of our country. So one of the biggest problems the people are facing today is the continuous price rise of all essential commodities. A price rise which is now affecting the livelihood and living standards of the people. in such a manner that they have to cut down their consumption their food consumption and consumption of other goods by their families the main reason for this price rise and inflation is the modi government's policies it is this government which has increase the taxes on petroleum products continuously in the last 8 years the excise duties on petrol and diesel on top of that new cesses and surcharges have been levied and even now after reducing some of these taxes by rupees 10 per liter recently even now we find that more than 27 rupees is the cess charged on 1 liter of petrol and on diesel it is nearly 22 rupees number of types of cesses and surcharges now these cess and surcharges are not divided between the central government and the state governments that is why they are called cess and surcharge they are not excise duties so the continuous rise in the price of diesel and petrol is not due to the rise in the international prices whether the international prices are high or low because of this burden of taxes on petrol and diesel they are contributing to the rise in prices of all other commodities and goods so this modi government's policy of keeping high taxes on petrol and diesel is the single biggest source of inflation and price rise in our country in the last financial year 2021 22 the modi government earned rupees 4 lakh crore revenue from this taxes on petrol and diesel this is how they are squeezing the people taxing the common people they don't tax the corporates and the richer section they have reduced the taxes on them and to make up for that they are squeezing the people by increased taxes on petrol and diesel that is why our party has been demanding that all these extra cess and surcharges which have been levied should be abolished and when you abolish them the loss of revenue which you will suffer 
you can make up that by increasing the taxes on the corporates the taxes on the incomes of the super rich sections of the people of our country so that the burden of taxation falls on the corporates and the rich and not on the common people so this is a class policy of the modi government that is to provide all benefits concessions to the corporates and the richer sections and tax the common people and squeeze the common people that is why it is very necessary when we talk about fighting price rise to see to demand that the modi government change its taxation policies so that the big corporates and the super rich who are making huge profits today they are taxed and that revenue can be used for the welfare of the people now we also have the policy of the modi government of increasing taxes on all food items we have seen how the goods and services tax the gst has been imposed on wheat flour atta rice curds dal all food items which are packed they are not branded items of any branded companies but even if it is packed and sold 5% gst has to be paid there is an increase will be there in the price of all the essential food items which are sold in most of the shops this has been decided only in june this year by the gst council and this is the worst form of burden on the people that food daily food items are going to be brought under the gst and taxed so the entire approach of this government is to see that taxes are somehow levied on every service every essential goods on the, of the people now the indian railways has announced that if you reserve a ticket on the train and you cancel that ticket you have to pay gst as part of the cancellation charges gst will be levied on that there also has come news that if you die and you are taken for cremation there will be a tax on cremation but we are grateful to the finance minister who has explained in parliament no we will not tax if you are being cremated but we are going to tax new crematoriums if you build a crematorium in any place you will have to pay gst on that crematorium so in future if you die after some time you go to your body is taken to a new crematorium the charges will increase for cremation so even if you are dead they will not spare you in life they will tax you and when you die also you are going to be taxed for dying so this is the type of the worst inhuman anti people taxation policy that the modi government has imposed so it is clear that this modi government as referred to by some earlier speakers is a alliance of the corporates and the communal forces it is the hindutva corporate alliance which is running this modi government and the result of that has been seen just a few days ago one industrialist gautam adani has now become the third richest person in the world the first two are americans and the third now richest man in the world is a indian who happens to come from gujarat narendra modi state whose rise 
in fortune and wealth has been phenomenal during these last eight years. When Narendra Modi came to power in 2014 as Prime Minister, the Adani groups or the Gautam Adani's total wealth and assets, his own personal wealth and assets was only about 2 lakh crores. Today it is 11 lakh crores and he's become the richest, third richest man in the world. So in eight years from 2 lakhs crores to 11 lakh crores, that is the rise in his individual wealth and assets. And the other big industrialist, Mukesh Ambani, his personal wealth and assets is today 9 lakh crores. So between these two industrialists, they are worth 20 lakh crores today, thanks to the Narendra Modi government. So you can see what is the what are the policies? Who does it benefit? It benefits those crony capitalists who are favored by the Modi government and the BJP RSS regime. And it is this alliance between the Hindutva forces and the corporates which has resulted in these anti-people policies which we are suffering from in the last eight years. So the other serious problems which the people of this country are suffering from all emanate from the class policies of this Modi government. We are seeing a big privatization drive in the country now against the public sector enterprises. A privatization drive which covers all sectors of the economy, public sector units and industries, in coal, in mining, in steel, in shipyards, in railways, public sector banks, insurance, all these are now on the block for privatization. And this will mean public employment the large number of jobs which are there in the public sector, which are permanent jobs, they are going to be finished in the coming years. And all the new type of employment and jobs which we are having, contractual employment, casual work, daily wage work, all this is going to increase. Already we have seen that under this government, Unemployment is reaching new heights. The latest figures about unemployment affecting different sectors or categories of people. What does it show? That between the age group of 20 to 24 years, that is the youth who join the workforce, there is 42% unemployment among the age group of 20 to 24. So this is the bleak future. Like inflation and price rise, which affects the livelihood of the people, unemployment has become a blight, a curse for the youth of this country. So all this is a result of, as I said, the corporate communal outlook and policies of this government. That is why it is very necessary that we mobilize all sections of the people, whether they are workers, whether they are farmers, whether they are agricultural workers, youth, women, students, those who are socially oppressed, all of them must be brought into struggles, united struggles against these policies of the Modi government.
which are harming the people's interest and the progress of this country. We can put up an effective fight and resistance to these policies only if we can also protect the democratic rights and the democratic system in our country. Today, this Modi government and the BJP RSS have launched a big attack on democracy and democratic rights in our country. All the opposition parties and the opposition governments, state governments, the non-BJP state governments are under attack. And we have to see that this attack on democracy means an attack on secularism and an attack on federalism. State governments, like here the DMK in Tamil Nadu, the DMK government in Tamil Nadu and the LDF government in Kerala and other state governments which are run by opposition parties like in Telangana, now in Bihar and other states. The Modi government is doing everything to prevent the state governments from fulfilling the promises it made to their people during elections. They are trying to deprive the states of the resources that they are due under the constitution. The use of GST itself, now you have seen, they have stopped giving compensation to the state governments which first was promised for five years and then all the state governments have demanded an extension of that compensation but they have refused to do so. It is the Modi government which is actively intervening to destabilize the state governments. They are using the central agencies like the CBI, the Enforcement Directorate, the Income Tax Department, etc. to target the leaders of the opposition party and their state government the chief minister and ministers in these governments. And it is this Modi government which is now taking away the due rights of the state governments in areas like education, in health policy, in language policy, in all areas the there is an effort to completely centralize everything and to deny the states the due powers and rights. So all this has to be opposed. Only if we can oppose this attack on democracy and democratic rights can we be able to mobilize the people to see that the voice of the people is heard and to force this government to change its policies or to be rejected by the people. So now, in the states where there are opposition ruled governments, we have to ensure that these governments are able to implement policies in favor of the people and they are able to push through alternative policies. This is being done in Kerala by the LDF government headed by Comrade Pinarayi Vijayan. Every effort to privatize a public sector undertaking of the center in Kerala is being stopped, halted. Recently, the a national paper mill, a central government public undertaking was closed and to be sold. The state government has bought that paper mill and has reopened that mill as a public sector undertaking under the state government. All these public sector units in Kerala have been turned around, made profit making rather than getting it closed. In Kerala, as you know, we have a very effective public distribution system where not only rice, wheat and sugar is given but all other essential commodities are being given at fair prices. So, 
all these measures in Tamil Nadu also there are so many social welfare measures pensions uh, grants for girl students etc etc all this is coming under attack Narendra Modi has announced recently that the opposition governments or opposition parties are offering freebies to the people this is a, he has condemned this what are freebies freebies is giving free public education free public health ensuring that midday meals are given to school children ensuring that there is old age pensions for people all social welfare measures are sought to be attacked by the modi government so that is why our party has decided that in the coming days it is not enough to oppose these policies of the modi government the governments which are run by the opposition parties by the secular democratic parties they must stand up to implement these alternative policies in favor of the people and build the widest unity so that we can put up a political fight to see that this dangerous corporate communal regime is eventually defeated and rejected by the people so this is the message we are taking to the people in this campaign and i'm sure that in the coming days you will rally on this alternative platform which we are putting forward and mobilize more and more people to come out in support of this fight against the anti people policies of the modi government and the struggle to defend democracy secularism and federalism in our country thank you